listening to Charting Cryptos, Commodities, and Currencies. Let's jump into the charts. We'll start off with the 24-hour-a-day Bitcoin chart. Things are continuing to move down. We haven't hit the low of last week yet, but we do have a red down candle. See the two-day chart, half-day chart are below the weekly trend line. Again, hoping to see Bitcoin pull back, reset, so that we're able to follow it. What we've seen as of late has not been helpful. Let me take this chart and uh, yeah, put the auto on it so you can see it all on the screen. But again, you can see these short-term pop-ups and then, you know, flat, popping up, down, popping up. Again, it just makes it hard when you don't have a beautiful chart that rolls back and forth so nicely, like I talk about all the time with something like the S&P 500. It goes from green to red to green to red. Why would you, if you could choose, and you can, to choose between a chart like this and a Bitcoin chart, which is well nigh impossible as of late to follow, why would you put your hard work in trading uh, attempting to trade, attempting to apply charting knowledge into something like this. That's why we want the chart to set back up and start moving in a more recognizable, chartable manner. Otherwise, you're just gambling. So we're hoping this pullback will continue for a while and we'll start seeing things move in discernible directions. This is where we are with Ethereum. Started to go up two weeks ago. Then uh, last week started to go down. It's down this week. We can see it has reached a, well, no, hasn't reached. I, again, another warning, these crosshairs, if you put them right over it and you look, it looks like that's a long candle, right? It's not. The candle's short. Those crosshairs can fool you, so always make sure to take it off the candlestick before you start judging it. So you can see we have not reached a lower low this week. Things are moving in the right direction. Two-day chart, you can see where the candle is below the weekly trend line on the two-day, well below it on the half-day. So again, we see Ethereum pulling back. Same problem here. We need a chart that's chartable. Well, look, you jump in here on an up move, well, you don't have hardly any time to capture anything if you would have captured anything before it slammed over and went down. And then you see how it slides down at the bottom. It does pop up, but so much movement this week, you barely have any time, if any time, to grab anything before it slides sideways, pops down, scares you out, and then pops right back up again. So not the kind of chart we want to see. We want to see these things reset into more tradable charts. Little bit better on the Bitwise 10 Crypto Index Fund. This top 10 cryptocurrencies weighted as per market share. A little bit more trackable, at least on these up moves here, this sort of meandering down hard to jump into and to feel safe with. But as we look at things, we can see them again moving in the right direction. And I don't know what is causing this. You can see when I move this, it is literally the same line, but it's not drawing itself right. I'm going to try to reset it here and see if this will affect on the chart. There we go. So I don't know what that's about, why it was not redrawing properly on the other two charts, but we just got it fixed. So again, we can see price, particularly over the last uh, Monday, Tuesday on the two-day chart, really hammering down, down for the day 2.44%. Same here on the half day, really for the last two days, pulling strong away from that weekly trend line going down. So again, want things to be chartable and readable. You don't want these short-term bump ups where it goes down and then bumps up only to drop down again. That kind of stuff just ruins your trade. We want nice, nice, smooth charts and hope that sometime in the not too distant future, Bitcoin, the Bitwise chart, Ethereum will start moving in those directions. Let's see, I've got four commodities for you. Corn. We talked about corn starting to move back up. Well, over the last going into this third week, moving up decent. Again, I mean, we're not talking flying up. 
uh, again, but it is moving in the right direction after bottoming out. You can see not a great deal of volume here, but uh, average this week, you know, building up maybe to average volume again, but moving in the right direction. We can see where things bottomed and then turned around and started moving up. Copper <clears throat> might be a good sign for heavy industry. It, of course, bottomed and now has been moving up over the last two weeks. Soybeans, same thing. They bottomed with higher than average. This is the kind of volume that helps us when we're looking for a bottom and we see higher than average volume and we see things really dipping low and then turning right around into a doji and then going up green. Those are good signs of a bottom being reached and things moving in the opposite direction. We look back in time, we can see where soy beans, I mean, look at all that volatility that week. If you got in, even with a green up candle with all that volume, you can see that it really spiked up and it would have scared the crap out of you when you had this doji that week. So again, not the easiest chart to chart, but it is good to see things bottoming here. And again, you know, that was lower than that prior. I was just looking to compare time frames uh, or compare lows rather. And uh, so anyway, looks like soybeans are turning around. This is an interesting one I wanted to show you, silver. Now, of course, we know gold, uh, as we look at gold, it is still going down. We talked about it on the bit on the daily review today, but silver has has stopped its downward move and trying to move up. Now, again, no great flux in volume here showing us like we saw on this top where things had topped out with that high volume. What we saw on this bottom, things bottomed and then you had that real high increase in uh, volume and then things shot up. We're not seeing that right now, but it is interesting that at least silver has stopped the drop going into the second week, although it was down for the day, 1.54%. So again, it's done the same thing here. Let's try redrawing that on the two day, then doing it again on this. Why is that messing with me? Come on. Um, there we go. Okay. So we can see where, you know, things have popped up and through both on the weekly trend line on the half day and the two day chart. And that's where we are on the commodities I wanted to show you this week. Lastly, we'll go into currencies. And we've had some interesting things occur. We had seen, you know, the euro heading down. Well, this week bumping around, we saw where we had a really high volume here. What was the low? The low was uh, 89, uh, 98 rather, 25. The next week, 98.45. So it didn't hit a lower low. This was the low with that high volume. Uh, you know, again, started to got, uh, had, had another red candle, but not hitting a lower low. And then this week, a green up candle going up. That may very well portend more up moves for the euro. British pound, again, nothing really exciting here because this volume way back here really sort of skewed it and just not seeing anything exciting in the volume arena necessarily. Um, I mean, we hit average volume here, but again, it's such a small little amount. Looks like you hit average volume there where it hit the most recent low and over the last three weeks trying to move up on the British pound. Now, here's another one. You know, we saw the Canadian dollar just sort of sliding along, struggling over the last two weeks, popping up. Again, we see that doji and that high volume and then turning around. Again, remember, volume, when you have sort of an anomaly, well, it is an anomaly here. Very small candle, but lots of volume. What's that telling you? Well, somebody is selling and somebody else is immediately buying. Is that the insiders who are fluxing this? Like here, you know, where you, you reach an interim bottom and then things move around. You know, who is buying? Who is selling? Why is this happening? And then it's confirmed by a reverse in trend. That tells you a great deal. 
Uh, next, we see the Australian dollar. Like the Canadian dollar, it too has hit a bottom with higher than average volume and then turned around and heading up going into the second week. If you haven't taken our training on volume, please make sure and do that. I'm going to link that at the end of today's video. You'll see it on the screen here in just a second. I think you'll get a great deal out of that and you'll understand more of what I'm talking about. I do appreciate our Patreon members. Thank you so much, my friends. We appreciate what you do for us. Hope these three-wave trades are helpful to you. God bless.